another really fun song for you this week. So if you're on the couch, go ahead and get to your feet and join with us as we sing this song. All right, kids, you're going to want to get down real low to start. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow.
kids, I'm Amy, and welcome to another edition of Celebration Online, and welcome to our Celebration Garden. We have got a great growing kind of lesson for you today, and we are so glad you decided to tune in. But before I teach you about today, let's review what we have been learning. First, we talked about hope, and hope is a target for our faith. It's that dream, that picture that we get on the inside. And then we talked about faith. What is faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Remember, faith is what we use to get those things that we are believing God for, such as healing and prosperity. Then we talked about how does faith come. Last week we told you that Romans 10, 17 tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So I hope you've been hearing the word of God this week. Well, today we wanna teach you how faith grows and it grows out of the word. Every time you read your Bible, faith is gonna grow. It can't help it. Every time you hear your pastor speak, faith is gonna grow. Every time you hear Celebration Online and you hear the word of God, Faith is going to grow. It's just like my seeds. If I plant these seeds and the soil is right, I give them the right amount of water, the sunlight is just perfect, what's going to happen to my seeds? They're going to grow. They can't help but grow. And kids, when you're in the Word, when you're hearing the Word, your faith can't help but to grow. So we want to encourage you to stay in the Word, stay in church, keep, continue to listen to Celebration Online and to your pastor speak. And faith will grow. Well, we have another secret code for you this week. It's special letters just like last week, so make sure you're paying attention as all nine letters will show up throughout today's lesson. We're giving you one word that you'll see at the end, but all other nine letters will show up during the lesson, so pay attention. We love you. Enjoy today's lesson and learn that your faith grows. Hi kids, I'm Natalie and I'm so excited. We are teaching you today about how to grow your faith. And we have a great memory verse. But first, check out this beautiful sunflower field. Some of these sunflowers are even taller than I am. Look at this giant sunflower. Did this sunflower, was it always this big? No, of course not. We know that all of these sunflowers grew from a little seed. I have some sunflower seeds right here. Well, how did these sunflower seeds grow up into these tall, beautiful flowers? The farmer had to come out and water the seeds every day. And he had to come out every week. He had to pull weeds, pick up trash, and take care of the field so that these sunflowers would grow tall and strong. And kids, our faith works the same way. We have to do something for our faith to grow big and strong. And that is hear the word. We learned last week in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, kids, the Bible also teaches us that it's so important what we hear. What we hear feeds our spirit on the inside. Our memory verse today is Proverbs 4.20. Open up your Bibles and read that with me. Proverbs 4.20 says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Kids, we're to pay attention to the Word of God. We need to hear the Word of God every day for our faith to grow. Kids, what if the farmer that planted these seeds came out every day and poured soda all over the field. Would the flowers have grown big and strong? No, of course not. What if every night after he cleaned up at home, he came out and dumped his trash all over the field? Would the flowers have grown big and strong? No, he had to come out and water them. And kids, our faith works the same way. If we expect our faith to grow big and strong, we need to feed our faith good things. We can't feed our faith with garbage. We need to be careful that all the things we're hearing when we're watching TV, playing video games, hanging out with friends, we don't wanna hear things that hurt our faith. We wanna feed our, thing, our faith with things that are encouraging us. We wanna hear the word of God. So what are some things that we can do to feed our faith good things? Well, we should read the Bible every day. And Miss Amy said, we can read the Bible and read it out loud so we're seeing it and hearing it. We also hear the word when we go to church every Sunday and Wednesday. And we can watch Celebration Online to hear the word. Kids, you can also read books to encourage your faith. Christian 
faith building books. There's books like these that are just for kids filled with scripture for you to build your faith. And you can listen to faith-filled Christian music. There's all sorts of ways to feed our faith good things. So kids, we want to encourage you to be careful what you hear, to pay attention to the Word of God, and to feed your faith by hearing the Word of God every day so your faith will grow big and strong just like these sunflowers. Well, hello there, kids. My name's Farmer Fred, and I'm here to talk to y'all about farming and faith again. But this time, I'm here at my cornfields. Now, how do you think all this corn got here? I didn't just walk outside one day and suddenly there was corn everywhere. No, I had to do work to get ready for it to grow. I had to go outside, and I had to pull up the weeds and throw out the rocks and throw away some trash people had sometimes thrown out there. And that's just like praying the prayer of salvation because it gets your heart clean and ready for faith to grow. And then I had to plant the seed. And then after that, I had to water the seed because I couldn't just leave it dry and hope it rained. I mean, that might work, but it doesn't consistently. But um, you know what that's like? That's like reading your Bible because you should do it every single day. It helps make sure that your faith will grow, just like water is to seed. And you know what else I had to do? Every single week, I had to come up and I, I had to wake up and I had to go and pull out the weeds and throw out the rocks and throw away some trash to make sure that it grew. And you know what that's kind of like? That's kind of like going to church because you should do it every single week and it'll make your faith grow. And just like Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God. You know what ha had to happen for, else had to happen for the seed to grow? It had to have sunlight. I couldn't just put the seed in the dark room and expect it to grow. No, 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 no. I had, it had to have sunlight. And that's just like living a faithful lifestyle and having friends that'll boost your faith and listening to songs that'll boost your faith. You know when you can listen to songs that boost your faith, faith while you're on a tractor or, or a car, I guess, you know, whichever one suits you the best. And you know my favorite song? It's the read your Bible and it'll grow, grow, grow. I don't know if that's how it goes, but it's my favorite. And uh, if you do all of those things, then your faith is sure to grow, grow, grow just like my corn, uh, my corn right here. See, it's, it's big, tall, strong, it's really good. You know, all this talk about corn is really making me hungry. Mm. You know what I really feel like right now? Corn cobbler, corn bread, corn gumbo, corn and shrimp, corn bread, corn on the cob, corn with butter, corn, uh, Corn some another, uh, corn stalk, corn leaf. Hey kids, I'm Sarah and I'm here with Miss Natalie with a great Bible story to tell you all. Today's Bible story is about a great man of faith from the Old Testament. Do you think you know who it is? If you guessed Abraham, you're right. That's right kids, before we read our Bible story though, let's recap a little bit. You see, Abraham, when he was around 75 years old and his wife Sarah was around 65 years old, God made a covenant, a promise with Abraham. God promised Abraham that if he would obey him and follow God, that God would make him the father of many nations. Well, kids, Abraham and Sarah, they were older and they didn't have any children. They could have even been grandparents by then. But you know what? Abraham was a man of great faith because he used his faith to stand on God's promise. God had given him a word that he would have a son. And so Abraham stood on that word. He stood in faith and did not doubt for 25 years. Let's read in our Bible story and find out what happened when Abraham was 100 years old. Genesis 21, starting with verse 1. 
And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. So the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. Now, kids, do you think anyone that old today would be able to bear children? No! What makes Abraham and Sarah so special, Miss Natalie? Well, kids, Abraham had a word, and we learned last week that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So Abraham used that word from God, and he stood on it. It helped build his faith, and he stood on that word until it came to pass. Now, kids, our faith works the same way. But just like Miss Sarah said, can we believe God for anything? Should I believe God for $10 billion? No, no, of course not. God didn't promise me $10 billion, but His Word does promise me that God will supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory. And He promises that I'll have more than enough. So kids, whatever you're believing God for, if you're believing God for healing, there's scripture. God's Word says that by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. Find scripture for what you're believing God for and stand in faith. Don't doubt. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. So be like Abraham and stand in faith until that promise comes to pass in your life. Remember, you too can be a person of great faith. God's story, God's promise to Abraham. So part of God's story is about a promise God made to Abraham and it begins like this. Once there was a guy named Abraham. He had a wife, Sarah. They didn't think they could have any kids, which was a major disappointment because they really wanted a family. But little did Abraham know that God had a very special plan for him. When Abraham was 75 years old, God promised to give him kids, and one day God would send the rescuer through his family. All God asked was that Abraham and Sarah leave their home first and follow him. Now, they had a tough choice to make. Leave all their friends and trust God or stay comfortable. This was not easy. See, Abraham really wanted kids, but was already pretty old. Sarah was getting up there too. Not to mention, she had never been able to get pregnant. So if Abraham and Sarah were going to leave their home and trust in God's promise, they had to believe that God would do something that seemed impossible. The good news is, they decided to trust that God would keep His promise. That's always the right choice. So Abraham and Sarah moved from their home to a land called Canaan. Right away, God reminded Abraham of his promise. He said, I will make your children like the dust of the earth. Can specks of dust be counted? If they can, then your children can be counted. This was God's funny way of telling Abraham he would have a lot of kids because nobody can count every piece of dust. Well, this promise seemed great, but after a while, Abraham and Sarah still had no kids, let alone as many as the pieces of dust. Now, they were really old. Sometimes God doesn't remind us of His promises because He wants us to learn to trust Him. But God took Abraham outside at night and told him to look at the stars. He reminded Abraham that He would give him that many kids. So Abraham decided to keep believing God. He and Sarah waited again. After more years, he got impatient. This time, God told Abraham, by next year, Sarah will have a son. But by now, Abraham was 99 years old. He and Sarah had both given up on having kids and God's promise. In fact, when Abraham told Sarah what God said, she laughed. It's probably not a good idea to laugh at God's promises, but Sarah was tired of waiting and had stopped trusting. The great thing is, even if we think it's impossible, God really does keep his promises. And just like God promised, Sarah got pregnant the next year after Abraham's 100th birthday. When her son was born, she named him Isaac, which means laughter. Sarah said, God has given laughter to me. Everybody who hears about this will laugh with me. And think about it, a really old lady having a baby is pretty funny. God kept his promise to give Abraham and Sarah a son. Even though they didn't think it was possible, it was easy for God because he can do anything, including giving old people babies.
And remember how God was going to give Abraham as many children as the stars in the sky? Well, Isaac grew up and had children, who had more children, who had more children. This kept going and going and going. And guess who eventually was born in Abraham's line? The rescuer himself, God's son, Jesus. All because Abraham followed God and trusted God to keep his promise. And that's the story of God's promise to Abraham. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Abraham and Sarah were old. God promised to give Abraham kids. Abraham and Sarah waited. They got impatient. God reminded them he keeps his promises. Abraham and Sarah waited more. They got impatient again. God told them Sarah would have a baby. Sarah laughed. She had a baby. Jesus was eventually born into their family. God always keeps his promises. And that's a part of God's story. Hi kids, I'm Miss Ashley. And I'm Brother Kendall, and we have a couple of review questions for you today. Yes, we want to see how well you listened. Are you guys ready? Okay, let's get started. All right. Question number one. You wake up and it's a Sunday morning and you are so tired because you stayed up way too late last night. Now, you can either go back to bed and sleep in or go to church with your family. Tell me, does going to church with your family grow your faith? That's right, it does. Going to church with your family and hearing the word of God plants those seeds of faith in your heart, just like this seed up here starting to sprout. All right, question number two. So say you're at the beach and you want a break from playing in the sand. You have two options. You can play a game on your phone or you can read the Bible story that you learned in celebration online last week. Which one do you want to do? If you read the Bible story, is it going to grow your faith? Yes, that's right. If you read the Bible story, it will grow your faith, just like the seedling will grow. Right, and as it gets bigger and bigger, we move on to question three. Question three, you're on a really long road trip with your family going on vacation. Now, you can either play a video game that's really fun, or you can listen to some good Christian worship music. Now. Will listening to good Christian worship music help you grow your faith? That's right. Listening to faith-building worship music will help grow and grow your faith, just like this beautiful flower. Guys, you did a great job. You definitely were listening this week. We want to continue to encourage you this week to grow in your faith. Hi kids, we have had such a great time today teaching you about how to grow your faith. But kids, the first step in growing your faith is to accept Jesus into your heart, to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. So if you have not yet done that, we want to give you an opportunity to do that today. So bow your heads, close your eyes, and say this prayer with me. Father God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus for me. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he lived on the earth, that he died, and that three days later he rose again. Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I thank you that you washed me clean. I accept Jesus into my heart today. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. God, I make you my number one, and I thank you for your word that grows my faith. I praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations, kids, you are now a Christian, and now you can hear the word every day and start growing your faith. All right, kids, we had so much fun teaching you about how faith grows. And I wanna encourage you, make sure you read your Bible. And when you read it, read it out loud so you can hear it. Stay in church, listen to Celebration Online, all those things will grow your faith. And remember, faith grows out of the Word. So every time you hear it, your faith is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, just like a seed grows. Well, once again, we have another great secret code for you. Today makes number 19. So that's a lot of Bible bucks for you to earn when we open Celebration back up. But we gave you one word and there's a word on each side for a total of nine letters. So write that down and bring it to church when we're back. We love you, we miss you, we can't wait to see you really, really soon. See you next time, bye. Thank you for watching Celebration Online. 
I want to encourage all of you to make sure you're in church. We have three wonderful locations with three amazing children's ministries that you can be a part of. We have Columbia, South Carolina. If you live in that area, please go see Pastor JT and Miss Natalie at their church. If you live in the Georgetown area, please go see Pastor Justin and Miss Joanna at their church. And last, if you live right here in Florence, South Carolina, come see us. You can meet my husband, Pastor Steve, and see myself over here in celebration. We have a great time every Sunday. Forgive me of my sin. I thank you that you wash me clean and I accept Jesus into my heart today. I make Jesus my Lord and Savior. God, I make you my number one and I thank you, Lord, for your word that helps to grow my faith. Natalie. I thank you. Natalie, stop. Hurry, dude, hurry. This is Farmer Fred. Take one. Well, hello there, kids. My name's Farmer Fred. And I'm here to talk to y'all about farming and faith again. But this time, I'm here in my cornfields. And I forgot. All right. You can turn this way, but you can't turn. No, no. that's the wrong way. The other way. No, the other way. You can yes. only turn that way. You can turn that way. Don't turn the other way. Mm -hmm.